Hey everybody, it's Barry. Glad to have you join me once again. Recently, I participated in a class designed to help people become more effective in different aspects of their lives. It's very popular, so you may have heard of it. It's called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. In the class, they stated that to be effective, you must begin with the end in mind. To accomplish this, they suggested that you create and live by a personal mission statement. As I was sharing what I learned with Ashley, she realized that the principles I learned in the class can be applied to your approach to Chinese vocabulary. And tip number one was born. Tip number one, visualize achieving your goals. Yes, as the seven habits class instructed, begin with your end in mind. Then create and live by a Chinese learning mission statement. This leads us nicely into tip number two. Tip number two, plan for personal victories. The title of this tip got its name from the seven habits class, but you've probably heard the advice in this tip before. Here it is. A schedule is every language learner's friend. Now be honest with yourself. Do you actually have a solid plan or is your plan a bit haphazard? If you don't have a solid plan, resolve to make one after this video ends. Don't procrastinate, do it. A plan will not only make you more productive, but it will help you to celebrate those personal victories quicker. What are personal victories? Goals that are achieved. When making your plan, determine ahead of time not only what learning materials you'll use, but also when you'll use them and where you will study. This will save you valuable study time later. Think about what your days usually include and look for times and locations in which you would enjoy learning Chinese. If you commute to work, perhaps you can listen to an audiobook, a podcast, or a Chinese radio station. Consider what types of study best fit the different situations you encounter daily. Let me ask you, did you know that MandarinMania.com has sources for you to obtain the learning materials I just mentioned? Not only audiobooks, podcasts, and Chinese radio stations, but there are more than 300 learning resources and tools that we have cataloged so far to help you learn Chinese. Best of all, many of the sources are free. Throughout this video, I'll tell you what other things you can find on our resources page and other areas of MandarinMania.com to help you. Here's one final thought on planning. Once you have your plan mapped out, Work hard to make following it a habit. Tip number three, learn practical terms and words. In the beginning, make a list of practical terms and words that you use in your everyday conversation. While greetings are important, go beyond that by perhaps including your hobbies, interests, and work-related terms. Make sure you include the synonyms as well. For example, think about all the ways we can express happiness in English. Glad, joyful, cheerful, delighted, and so on. Then, list in hand, find out what the Chinese equivalent is and begin to use the words in your conversations right away. Just remember that word-for-word -word translations aren't always correct, so take the needed time to ensure accuracy. In episode one of this series, I told you that MandarinMania.com links together our original content and the content of other creators so that you can spend more time learning and less time looking for free materials. Our Build Your Vocabulary page follows that plan. There, we are already collecting videos and learning materials to help you build your Chinese vocabulary and phrase arsenal. I'll link it below so you can check it out. Tip number four, keep a journal. In tip three, I asked you to make a list. You might find it useful to make this your habit. A running list of all the useful new words you encounter will allow you to revisit them again and again. If you've gone green, there are plenty of apps out there to assist you. Some of them even allow you to search your entries, which can be quite useful. Remember to think beyond the definitions. I mentioned synonyms in tip three. You can also include the parts of speech and corresponding measure words. Ask yourself, is the word I'm learning often associated with other words? If so, include those. Idioms are also quite popular in Chinese culture. Is the word you are learning used in any idioms? If so, learn them. Tip number five, use a dictionary. While this tip may be an obvious one, it's definitely a keeper. Always have a dictionary handy and immediately look up words that are unfamiliar to you. 
A good paperback has its place, but today's online dictionaries and apps offer you so much more. Most have audio and sample sentences, and some offer flashcard decks that you can build yourself. At the time this video was recorded, there are links to 15 dictionaries listed on our resources page. Go check them out and find the one that's right for you. Then, explore all the useful tools they offer to build your vocabulary. Tip number six, learn words in groups. Rather than learning one word at a time, focus on groups of words and phrases. Not only will you build your vocabulary quicker, but many people believe this approach aids your recall. For example, instead of simply learning the word invitation, try learning the phrase accept an invitation. This method will also have you building full sentences sooner. Tip number seven, dig deeper into synonyms. Once you identify synonyms or words that share similar meanings, take the time to discover if one word is more appropriate than another in certain circumstances. To illustrate, Take a look at these two Chinese words. Both words mean to know. So how would I say, I know Tom properly? Well, if I'm talking about my friend Tom, who I personally know, I would use friendsure to express that I know him. But if I'm talking about Tom Cruise, the celebrity who I've only seen on television, I would use to indicate that I know him in the sense that I know who he is. Tip number eight, identify word nuances. Word nuances are words that have alternate meanings in different contexts. Take special note of any you find as you build your vocabulary. Tip number nine, flashcards. Never underestimate the power of handwritten flashcards. They are a bit old school, but writing down the words and definitions can have a powerful effect on your memory. My personal favorite, however, is Anki. Anki is a spaced repetition flashcard program that is invaluable to language learners. Using it helps you to remember more things in a shorter frame of time. This is because Anki presents you with the words you struggle with more often than those you know well. You'll be happy to learn that we offer both printable and downloadable Anki decks on our website. And like everything on our website, they're free. If you want to make your own printable cards using Word but aren't sure how, we have you covered there too with tutorials and templates that we provide. Creating Anki decks from scratch can be very time consuming because Anki requires cards to be entered one at a time. Our tutorials teach you how to create entire decks in a spreadsheet program, then import them into Anki, making the process much quicker. All our flashcards and tutorials can be found under flashcards in the main menu of our site. Tip number 10. Make it a habit to learn new words every day. If that list of yours is going to grow, consistency is key. Make it your habit to discover new words every day. Just be sure to vary the sources from which you gather new words. Otherwise, you may lose interest. If you're a beginner, a language learning game app might appeal to you. More advanced learners may try choosing reading materials that are different from their usual fare. A personal favorite of my wife's is to see her world in Chinese. What does that mean? Take out that dictionary app and find out how to say the things that make up your world. Translate your grocery list. Describe the things in your room. Find out what those appliances are called. The list is endless. The resources page on mandarinmania.com can help you find a variety of materials from which you can collect words. Tip number 11, use eBooks and audiobooks. Whether you're learning Chinese characters or not, Hearing the words can go a long way in helping you build your vocabulary. Stories are also entertaining and chock full of new words to discover. If you're a beginner, try starting with a book designed for kids so that the words you encounter are easier for you to grasp. Here again, I'll plug our resources page for book sources. Tip number 12, learn through song. While it's definitely not the most grammatically correct way to learn Chinese, it can be quite entertaining to sing along to Mandopop. Just remember that musicians often favor word order that is pleasing to the ear rather than correct. You also won't be learning tones through songs, as Chinese is sung without tones. But you can expect your favorite tunes to get stuck in your head along with its vocabulary. At the time of this recording, we have over 50 Chinese song translations on our website. Best of all, they include pinyin, so you don't need to know any characters to sing along. Tip number 13. Use use, 
Use the new words immediately. Use the new words several times in conversation as soon as you can. Don't worry about sounding silly. Just let your head down and dive into using the language. If you do, you'll retain it and learn from your mistakes in the process. If you don't have a friend to practice with, language exchange sites such as italki.com can help you find a practice partner for free. Try and push yourself to express your thoughts and ideas in as much Chinese as possible. Tip number 14, imitate native speakers. This tip goes along with the previous one. Listen to your language partner and imitate them. Having conversations with natives will help you learn words in context. You'll also discover that the way a native actually expresses themselves is often much different than the way described in your textbook. For examples of this, you can see the pages Greetings and Native Greetings under Build Your Vocabulary on MandarinMania.com. You can also imitate the stars of your favorite dramas. There are currently 36 sources to watch dramas and movies on our resources page. Tip number 15. Don't forget to have fun. Of course you want to challenge yourself, but make it enjoyable too. Make a plan, put it into action, and keep it fun. Do you have a great tip we didn't mention or a great resource you use? Please tell us in the comments below. We love hearing from you. Before you go, please take a moment and like and share this video with your friends. Just remember that musician... <laughs> <laughs>